There are three main types of objective neurological examinations. First, a routine neurological screening assessment. Second, ongoing neurological observations. And third, a complete neurological assessment. This video will focus on routine neurological screening assessment. The general inspection and level of consciousness should be assessed at the start of every shift or when you first take over the care of a person. It assists you to identify any significant change in the general neurological condition of the person, their level of consciousness, if indicated, their pupil size and reaction to light, and muscle strength and symmetry. Changes in neurological status can be life-threatening and can also significantly impact on the person's ability to carry out their activities of daily living. Check your textbook for the necessary equipment and preparation of the person. I ensure my nails are short and perform hand hygiene. Rob. Rob, sorry to wake you, mate. No. While I'm chatting, I'm also checking that the lighting is adequate, provide privacy, and I assist the person to a semi-fowler's position. At this time, I'm also noting cues such as the person's um, alertness, their right. posture, so facial features, hygiene right and grooming, behaviour, speech, facial moment. expressions, whether they appear relaxed or agitated, whether they can maintain eye contact, whether their movements are coordinated, and any changes from a previous assessment. A change in the level of consciousness is the single most important factor in this assessment. A change can be subtle. Note the ease of arousal and state of awareness and orientation of the person. A person is fully alert when their eyes are open or open spontaneously at your approach, when they are orientated to person, place and time, and when they are able to follow verbal commands appropriately. Any suspected change in the person's level of consciousness should trigger a more detailed assessment using the Glasgow Coma Scale and reported to a medical practitioner. Refer to your textbook and to the video link for the Glasgow Structured Approach to the Assessment of the Glasgow Coma Scale. Um, Assuming no change in conscious state, I'll now move on to test the pupillary light reflex. First, I'll darken the room, if it's possible, and ask the person to gaze into the distance to dilate the pupils. Or just look up towards the top of my head and I'll just shine the light in. I'm shining a fine light beam from a pen light torch in from the side to the middle of the face on each eye separately. Normally, you will see constriction of the same sided pupil, a direct light reflex, and simultaneous constriction of the other pupil, a consensual light reflex. I'm noting the size and shape and symmetry of each pupil, and both pupils should constrict briskly. Gauge the pupil size in millimetres both before and after the light reflex. Normally, the resting size is three, four, or five millimetres and decreases equally in response to light. Okay, now the hands again, so I'll get you to lift them up yep. off the bed for me. If I don't know the person's baseline function, I'm going to start by assessing strength at the normal level of power, five out of five, by asking the person to push against my hand pressure, against gravity and with resistance. I am noting the symmetry in strength between the arms and the legs. If they cannot do this, I will continue to work my way down the scale See your text for more details. All right, I'll let you get back to sleep now. Um, is there anything I can get for you at the moment? No, I think I'm all good for now. I'm all just right. sleep. Yep. Record the person's level of consciousness, pupil reaction for each eye, and pupil size in millimetres, as well as the person's muscle power and symmetry on the appropriate chart. Make a note of anything you identified in your general inspection.
Thank you.